Okay. Uh, so good afternoon, everyone. This is a session on, on well, a presentation on, on, on how how we use OpenStack on the EGI Federated Cloud. I'm I'm Anor Fernandez, working for for EGI Foundation as a cloud architect, and and I will speak to you first about EGI because probably most of you don't, don't know about it. Uh, what is our cloud, our federated cloud, and, and, and also how, how, how OpenStack is, is used there. So first, EGI. EGI is, uh, is providing advanced computing for research. And, and what we try to deliver is, is to open solutions for science and research infrastructure by federating digital capabilities, resources, and expertise between communities and across national boundaries. So, how we do this is by offering a set of services, which are listed here. We have three big categories. First one would be compute, and here we have cloud compute, which would be uh, infrastructure as a service, so running VMs, block storage, and these kind of things. Then we have cloud con container compute, which is running Docker on top of, of the cloud compute, actually, on top of virtual machines right now. And we have also high throughput compute, which is providing you a, a enormous patch system where you can execute thousands of uh, computational jobs to analyze uh, data sets. Then we have a storage and data. Here we have online storage where we would have the, the object storage uh, like Swift and also uh, a files based uh, storage that is used for, for some of the research uh, activities. We have archival storage, which it's about uh, making backups basically. And then we have also a data transfer uh, service that allows to move very large uh, data sets from one place to, to another in a reliable way. And the last kind of services that we have is, is about training. We have uh, two kind of services here. We have the FITSM training. Uh, FITSM is an a, a IT service management standard, which is lightweight and, and is focused on, on federation, so we do training on this kind of uh, uh, service management uh, standard. And we also have a, a subset of the compute and storage infrastructure for, for training. So if our research community w want to, wants to do uh, some training event, we can let them uh, use uh, some of their resources for, for these kind of events. So they get new users and these kind of things. All of these services are provided by the EGI Federation. So the EGI Federation is composed by, by 26 partners. 24 of them are, are the, the national grid initiatives, as, as we call, so basically institutions from, from each of the European countries. And then we have also CERN and EMBL as part of, of, the, of, the, of the EGI. All of that is... Uh, managed centrally in the EGI Foundation, which is uh, uh, located in, in Amsterdam. And this was established in 2010, uh, after a decade of investment by national governments and the European Commission. And, and we cover the whole Europe, and we try to support cutting-edge research, innovation, and, and knowledge transfer in, in Europe. Uh, most of the resource providers that we have are from, from public institutions or research institutions at each country or universities. You, we have uh, currently one public cloud provider, but mostly it's this research institution. And these are the centers that provide the resources for, for our users. Uh, the EGI Federation is, uh, I, I think, it's the largest distributed compute e infrastructure worldwide. So we cover the whole Europe, but we are in col uh, we collaborate with international uh, partners. So we have right now more than 300 data centers. 23 of them are cloud providers. Uh, last year, we had more than 250,000 VMs running, uh, 1.7 million jobs each day, uh, which um, have accounted for, for 2.6 billion CPU hours. The, that was in, uh, a 26 increase in the last year. There are more than 48,000 uh, users, also a 25% increase last year, and this has uh, 
given results for, for publishing more than 2,000 research papers in the last year. So as I said, it's not just Europe, although most of our resources are, are in Europe. We have partnerships with, uh, with international uh, uh, institutions. So we have Compute Canada, we have the Open Science Grid in the USA, we have Africa and Arabia, we have Latin America, China, India, the Asia Pacific region. We have also Ukraine and, and EGI in the middle and in Europe. And, and what we do is we sign memorandum of understanding with, with these uh, partners to, to, to deliver our service in, in a coordinated way. Our users come from a wide variety of, of, of areas and, and sizes, I could say. So we have from the very big uh, groups of the very big collaborations, scientific collaborations like the, the, LC, the large Hadron Collider at CERN and, and several others. Then we have uh, communities that are not so big but cover several countries, so that would be the second column. Then we have also industry and, and, and SMEs involved in, 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 in using our resources. And we also try to cover what we call the long tail, which would be the individual researcher or, or small researcher groups that also have computing needs. And well, we try to, to serve them equally. So this is all about EGI. Now I want to go to, into the EGI Federated Cloud. So the EGI Federated Cloud is a collaboration of communities developing, innovating, operating, and using cloud federations for research and education. It's a small subset of, of all of our resource centers. I mean, it's 23 providers from 14 different countries. Uh, most of them are OpenStack right now. It's 16 of them. Six open nebula and one in Cinefo. Cinefo is a Greek techno technology similar to OpenStack in open nebula. And right now we have around 7,000 CPU cores. So not big, but uh, hopefully growing uh, soon. So what we do in this cloud federation, so we have this set of resources distributed all across Europe or across the world. And what we do is first we provide a harmonized operation uh, of their resources. So we federate by, by, by harmonizing the operations. What that means is we have a single service registry. We have an information system where you can get information about the resources available. We have a virtual machine marketplace. We are able to collect accounting information of what's been used. And we have a, a also harmonized access, access control. So I will go into details of each of them in, in, the, in the next slides. And for the users, what we do is to provide uniform user interfaces. So we have the concept of Realm, and in what Realm we say every provider of a given Realm must use the same interface for the users. So we have two. Right now we have the OpenStack, which uses OpenStack as an API. And we have the Open Standards Realm, which uses OCCI, which is an OGF standard. Uh, for, for providing access to the users. OpenStack is supported just by the OpenStack sites, uh, obviously, and the OC, uh, Open Standards Realm is supported for, by, by all, all of, the, of the other kind of uh, technologies that we are supporting. So now I will go into, into each of these uh, op federator services, this harmonized operation, and, and how we integrate that into, into OpenStack. So first, I will go into the EGI AI, so the authorization and, and um, authentication infrastructures. So right now, we have users identified with uh, X509 certificates from the IGTF Federation. I don't know if you are familiar with that. But OK, the users have certificates that are extended what, with what we call BOMS extensions, so BOMS. It's a, a, a group management system, basically, that provides attributes on membership of a community. So I, if I am a member of a virtual organization, this software will say, OK, you are a member, and you have uh, a given role and a given group in, in that uh, organization. Problem with this is not very user friendly. Uh, people normally complain about uh, certificates. They are not easy to obtain. Then it's not easy to use them in, in web-based uh, graphical user interface. So 
So EGI is, is, is moving towards other, other ways of, of uh, authenticate users, and we are moving to, to what we call EGI check-in, where we are going to use uh, federated identity standards like SAML or OpenID Connect, and the idea is to allow users to authenticate with their institutional accounts. So if you have a, an account at your, your university, so you could just use that to access EGI services. And we plan to, to go beyond bombs and, and also integrate other attribute authorities if a community has such. So how we do this with OpenStack? For the certificates and bombs, we have a, a plugin that we call Keystone Bombs. This is a whiskey filter for the Keystone version 2 API. So you deploy this filter in, in your Keystone and it's able to extract information from the proxies coming from the user uh, uh, to get information about the user name and, and the groups that uh, this user belongs to. And automatically will manage those users for you. It will create the users in Keystone and it will add rows to, to those users. And these mappings of the bombs attributes to Keystone is defined on a, on a file. This is available on, on GitHub and, and I mean, it's anyone, anyone can use it. So this is working right now, it's, it's fine, but it's only for version two of the API and, and, as, a, and as I said before, it uses the certificates. So we are moving into, into a new way of handling this, which is with the EGI check-in. So in this case, the idea is, in this case, it's an example with Horizon and, 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 and SAML. So the user would get to Horizon Horizon would contact um, Mod Shibboleth in the Apache HTTPD that's running Keystone. Uh, that will redirect the user to the EGI check-in. And in turn, the EGI check-in will redirect the user to the, uh, his, her home IDP. So this could be wherever uh, the IGTF for if the user has a certificate, JDUGAIN, or any other IDP. Uh, the user enters the credentials there in the IDP, and the IDP will term, return back a SAML assertion. Uh, with this, the EGI checking can contact the attribute authority and get additional information about the user, so which group uh, the user belongs to. So the EGI checking will uh, extend the SAML assertion with, create a new SAML assertion with uh, new claims, saying this user is whoever, and it also belongs to group A, B, and C. And it, this will turn back into, into the Apache, to Keystone, that will generate a token that can be used then to, to access Horizon. So we have this working. Uh, we uh, basically are miss, missing integration with, uh, with uh, some IDPs and attribute authority. We, ha we have all the technical parts ready. Uh, right now, we are delivering to the, to the resource provider at least this information, so the, uh, a single uh, unique identifier for every user, first name, last name, email, af affiliation, and then we have the as optional attributes, the, the, the claims about the, uh, the group membership that will be used for authorization in the Keystone. So this is uh, ready. And, and we hope to get this soon in, in production. Another thing that we have is the service registry. So all the centers in EGI are registered here in, in, in this central service registry, which, which is available in this URL, the .egi.eu. And here we have basically static information about service endpoints, just to know who is providing services. Uh, we, are, we have two OpenStack specific service types. We are having Nova and Swift there. So here in the screenshot, you can see the list, uh, a partial part uh, of the list of uh, um, Nova endpoints in the AGI Federation. And you have this kind of web front end and also API access so you can automate uh, from your API uh, query which services you could use. We also have an information discovery system. So you can get real-time information about the resources. Uh, this is based on, on a technology called the BDII, which is based on LDAP. Uh, it uses a standard called the glue schema. 
from the OGF also. And here we have actual capabilities, so for example, which images or which flavors are available at the site, which groups are supported, or, or the size of the resources. Uh, we have code for this also. It's available in GitHub, and it basically connects to your OpenStack Nova uh, API and gets information and publishes it back in, in, in the correct uh, format. Another uh, thing that we use for, for harmonized operation is, is the accounting. So we have uh, the central accounting repository. There we collect and aggregate uh, usage information and we have a portal where you can see uh, this information across the whole federation. So we have also uh, used a standard here, which is the OEF usage record that we have lightly extended for, for cloud resources. And we have a software called CASO to, to get the information from, from Nova and also Celometer if, if you have it. And, and here in the, in, the, in the slide, you can see this is just a screenshot from the, uh, from the accounting portal, uh, the total number of, of VMs run in the last couple of months and uh, ordered by, by the country and also by the community. So you can, can get this kind of uh, information easily. Uh, and publicly available. We also do monitoring. So uh, this monitoring is basically health checking of, of the services that they are available and, and, and running fine. We do very, very basic uh, functionality tests. So I am able to connect to the API and uh, I'm uh, able to, to spin up a VM and, and, and stop it. And, and it uses our service registry, GOGTV, to, to discover what's available and, and do the automatic testing of, of what's published there. And with this monitoring, we are able to calculate availability and reliability metrics that uh, are checked against the SLAs that we sign with our uh, users. So if the users have signed an SLA of 95% availability, we are able to check with the system if, if the, the resource centers are meeting the, these requirements or not. And this is powered by, by a tool called EGI Argo. This is also open source, available for anyone to use. And, and this is an, a screenshot of, of, of some resources. Uh, and well, you can see if everything is green, you have 100% availability. If you have some orange or red, then some programs are there. So we have a, a very good view of what's, what's happening and, and, and can react in, in in, in case of problems. One, I believe this is a very nice thing of the EGI Federated Cloud is, is the Virtual Machine Image Marketplace, which is uh, handled by the AppDB, the application database, which is a web application that has a lot of functionality, but uh, one part of it is, is the, the Cloud Marketplace, where we have an open library of virtual appliances. So anyone with an account can publish uh, images there that you can use on, on the clouds or, or download it and r run it in your virtual box or, or similar. So you can reuse, share, associate, cont contextualization to this image. And I mean, it, it's good so peop researchers can share their, their software easily. Uh, here we have also a set of EGI endorsed images that are configure in a secure way, so, so we try to uh, avoid problems in the infrastructure with these images, and, and they are tested, so we know that they will run everywhere. And we have also um, sets of images that are created by the community, by what we call the virtual organization. So a virtual organization can, can say, I like to have uh, this image and, and this other image, uh, available for me at the resource providers, and when they select them, it will be automatically distributed to all the providers supporting the, the organization. Again, we have uh, code available for doing that uh, in GitHub, and here on the screenshot you can see, well, this is a sample uh, entry of a virtual machine image. This is uh, EGI endorsed Ubuntu 14.04, so it's uh, uh, vanilla Ubuntu 14.04, uh, which is known to work in, 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 in all of the resources and, and 
with everything closed, so you don't have uh, clear security, security vulnerabilities there. Uh, this is the um, community view of the AppDB. So this is a community called Biomet. And there you see some of the images that they uh, have selected in their set. So all of these images will be available at the sites if the researcher needs it. And the researcher can click on, the, on each of the images and they will get some information like this. For example, this is uh, one image that is available on a site called Cessnet MetaCloud. And here you can see different flavors that you can use to, to start this VM. So from this single uh, web front end, you can get information about which images are available, where, and, and which flavors I can use for, for, for starting the, the images. And if you click on this get IDs, you will get all the IDs that you need to, to, to just go to do your command line and, and start it. Um, then we have the OCCI interface. Uh, we have an implementation for OCCI in, in OpenStack, which is called OOI. OCCI, for those that don't know about it, this is a, um, a RESTful protocol and API that is focusing on, on cloud interoperability. So it's mainly focused on, on infrastructure as a service, but it's extensible to, to other areas. This is in a standard uh, defined by the, by the OEF. And what we have done is to, to uh, deliver a, a new implementation of this OCCI standard in OpenStack. It's completely written from scratch. There was another implementation some time ago, but uh, um, it, it was not properly maintained and, and had some issues with uh, using internal OpenStack API. So we, we decided to, to, to start from scratch using only public APIs. So it's easier to transition from one OpenStack uh, version to another. It supports uh, VM management, volume management, and, and, and network operations, and can be installed easily uh, with a Nova API endpoint or, or as a separate Whiskey application. So in the global OCCI picture, we have um, OCCI has a set of client tools. We provide J Java APIs, Ruby APIs, uh, um, command line interface, and you could have any, any other OCCI independent client. We have a, a version which is in the middle, this Rocky server that is used right now in Open Nebula, but also can talk to, to Azure and, and, and Amazon Web Services. So it translates OCCI to, to those APIs. And we have then OOI here as a, as a layer that translates OCCI to, to OpenStack. So a client with OCCI support could go into any of these resources using the same API. So this is everything I have talked until now in, the, in a single picture, let's say, how we integrate everything with OpenStack. And well, you can see all of the blue boxes are what we are providing as a components that you can put into your OpenStack uh, to, to integrate with the EGI. Uh, then we have gray boxes would be the, the vanilla OpenStack uh, services. Users would just get tokens as, as usual, but using uh, this BOMS thing, and then it can, they can interact with the Nova API or the OCCI uh, APIs. And then we have a set of uh, EGI services that also interact with the site. The, the resource provider. So we have the monitoring that checks that everything is working, and we have the accounting repository that collects information about the sites. We have the BDAI to collect information and this um, uh, image uh, subscription with AppDB. This will turn soon into uh, using the AGI check-in. So, I mean, very similar to the previous slide, just changing this Keystone bombs to OS Federation extension of Keystone. So it would be just uh, uh, upstream Keystone, no modifications there. Uh, for the other blue boxes, we provide the appliance, which is a VM that you can start in your cloud and configure. So it will talk to your public APIs and do all the things for you. So you don't 
have to worry too much about the uh, about internal details. All of the components there are available uh, as Docker containers, so you can also run uh, it with Docker. We have full documentation about this, and it, the appliance is published also in DAPTV, so you can get there. You can get it from there. Uh, and of course, you can use that technology that we provide to build your own custom federation. Maybe you find some of these components interesting for you, and you want to to, to build your own federation. Uh, what we are proposing in EGI is that if you want to have a cloud realm with us, you should follow uh, the mandatory things here. So you should follow the EGI Federated Service Management, which means you need to be um, compliant with the policies of access, uh, follow security uh, coordination that we have. So if there is an issue, you have to to, to respond uh, to it, etc. Then you should register uh, your services in the EGOGDB, in the EGI service registry. You should uh, comply with the EGI AI and also provide accounting records uh, to, to, to the EGI accounting repository. Monitoring, once you register anything in GOGDB, it will be done for you. So this is it's mandatory, but nothing to do uh, from the provider side. And then we have the other services which we consider optional. So if you want to build a, a, a new cloud realm for your community and you don't need the information discovery, that's fine. Uh, you can do it like that. Uh, the same thing with uh, replication of uh, virtual machine images or integration with AppDB or using OCCI or using the EGI help desk that we have. So we provide the technology, and if you find it useful, yes, please go ahead and, and use it. And if you want to have a, a realm in, in EGI, please go ahead and, and, and get in touch with, with us so we can, we can create a new one. Now I have a few examples of who's using cloud compute right now. It's very high level view. Uh, we have uh, this web page in the EGI uh, website with uh, details of use cases. So for example, I have six. So different areas. One is from the uh, astro astronomy uh, area. So that's the extras project that is collecting a lot of data from, from 13 years. And, and it's using the cloud compute to implement the, the analysis of, of, of this uh, data. Then we have the DREAM, with which, which is about Earth of observation. So they are simulator, simulating uh, hydrometeorological events, uh, such as flooding, uh, et cetera. Then we have uh, another use case uh, from, from Sweden, which they have a, a set of tools for, for doing genomic analysis. And, and this is quite used uh, uh, worldwide. Uh, so it says uh, 6, 000, more than 6,000 users in 73 countries. And, and this is an application that you just uh, put in your laptop and connects to the cloud to, to do the, the calculations. Uh, some other examples in the, also in the bio area, this uh, example that was published in, in Nature, uh, not so long ago about salmonella and, and doing some RNA analysis of, of, the, of the bacteria. Then uh, the cloud of EGI has been used to, to do simulation of uh, seismic uh, uh, events like, like the, the, the earthquake that uh, happened in, in Italy this, this summer. Or another example is Speech Note, which is about analyzing uh, music, so, so they also run their, their, their analysis software in the AGI cloud. Um, so, so far we have that. Uh, we want to, to, to improve our, our federation. First, we want to improve the user experience by, by providing this certificate-less access with new EGI AI. We are extending the, this AppDB marketplace with a, with a new feature to, to be able to do the VM management directly on the web page, so you have everything in, in a single place. Uh, we have a new version of the OCCI standard coming that, that is improved. Uh, it's much easier to implement and, and has better networking support. 
we want to go beyond infrastructure as a service and, and, and want to exploit results from, from one of our sister projects, which is the Indigo project, to offer a platform as a service for our users. And we also want to get more involved in, in OpenStack, so we want to get uh, more involved in the scientific working group and, and work uh, into identity federation, which is something that w we need. And well, we, we'll try to, to push for, for changes that where, where, where we need where we need them. Uh, I have some references here. This is our web page. We have a, a section of our wiki with uh, lots of information about the federation. We have quite detailed installation manuals, so if you want to get technical, you can, you can really get technical. And we have a mailing list, which is this one, where you can send your mail, participate, and, and have discussions there about everything about clouds and, 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 and research. So thank you very much for your attention. Uh, there is some time for questions, so if you have some, just go ahead. So um, in your, your talk, is this on? Yeah, okay. okay. Um, in your talk, you described how you're doing uh, authentication on the front end. You're going from the old pro proxy cert to the, to the new method. But you also described a service registry and then also the uh, app marketplace. So. Given when a user authenticates and gets a set of attributes, do you use those to limit or control what kind of service discovery that they do and also what kind of app discovery that they, that, that they do? You had the example of the Biomed, I guess, group or something mm -hmm. like that. So when the user authenticates, do they get a Biomed attribute? Yeah. Are they a member? You know, how does that work? Yeah, so, so this EGI check-in will be integrated across all of the EGI services. So the service registry, the CogDB, is already integrated. So if you log in with the EGI check-in, EGI check-in will return to the CogDB. You're a member of this VO or you have an admin role, which is mostly the, the most important thing in, in CogDB. You are owner of this resource, so you can edit the resource. You can add new uh, endpoints yeah. there. So, so everything uses the attributes from the EGI check-in to, to do authorization. Okay. And, and different members of the Federation, different sites, can they, they register different service endpoints in the service catalog? So in the service catalog, you have, um, uh, you have, the, you have an owner of the, of the resource center, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that owner can add new people there. So you have like, uh, resource center means and, and that information is stored there mm -hmm. and and for the group membership we were using bonds right now but okay. but we we are able to plug into other attribute authorities that uh, mm -hmm. may appear and we think that they will be more than okay. just bonds and that information is also uh, included in the in the claims so so the the AppDB or GogDB, anything, can check those claims and, and present uh, a restricted view or, or anything you want to do. So. Okay, and, and then also in terms of how you manage your VOs, is there, I mean, there is a VOMS, there is a VO management system somewhere, um, but I, I didn't see that described here in any detail. So, in, in maybe I can go there to the... far away. So bonds would be this attribute authority here. So right now, as attribute authority, we are using bonds, but uh, this CGI check-in is able to, to, to use uh, anything with a REST interface and... and okay, uh, in, in terms of your attribute authority, um, is that where VO attributes would reside? Yeah. Okay, so in terms of defining what's in a VO or associating VO attributes with a specific user, that's where it would be done? Yeah. Okay. And you can have more than one attribute authority. So it's not restricted to just one. You could have as many as you want. Mm -hmm. and, and you would have to have some sort of uh, consistency between them? Yeah, we have defined, uh, there is another it's a sister project called AARC, which is all about uh, authentication and, and authorization, where we are trying to standardize how, how these claims are, are defined. So, uh, so everyone has the same staff and, and 
the sites, the resource center can uh, know how, what to expect. So they know the claims will come in this format and, 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 and we'll know how to, how to deal with them. Okay, thank you. Uh, you're welcome. Any other questions? Can you go to the, because okay. otherwise it would, okay. Um, in your very first slide, you mentioned, or maybe the second one, that you provided different sorts of resources, uh, high throughput, general purpose, training, that sort of thing. I was wondering how you manage, um, I guess, the capacity planning around those things? So we are actually <laughs> doing the, that exercise to, to, to define how we are going to do the, the capacity planning of, of, of everything. So um, I'm not uh, involved in that area, so I cannot give you a, a good answer. We are working on defining the process for, for, for the capacity planning. So. Yes, we are aware we need to do capacity planning and, and we are defining how to, how to do it and, and uh, it will be done soon because we are standardizing all our internal processes and, but right now I cannot say, okay, we do it like this or like that. But yeah, we are aware that we, we need this capacity planning. So I think that's that's all. Thank you very much for 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 your attendance.